Hi everyone, this is Gregory Wilkie with a video review of Avis Car Rentals. I uh, just wanted it to be known that Avis and Budget are actually the same company, so everything I say about Avis is also going to apply to Budget. Um, our experience happened exclusively at the Denver International Airport car rental location, but the customer service we were provided uh, applies to corporate and Avis in general as a whole. I just want to start off by saying that I was not paid to do this video. I have never worked for Avis. Uh, this review isn't slander. It's just an honest account of what happened to us while renting at the Denver International Airport location. So with that, I'll get started. We got into the rental location about 2 in the morning and there was three clerks working behind the desks and then three people in line. First person I see coming back from the parking lot said that his vehicle was all dirty, bent out of shape, and he didn't feel like filling out an incident report form so he wanted a new vehicle. And I'm like, oh great, you know, what, what are we getting off to here? Off to a bad start it seemed like. Another lady walks in and says her car wasn't even in the parking lot and I'm just thinking, oh great, it's 2 in the morning. I'm carrying 100 pounds of gear, I got two friends waiting for me, I just want to get to my hotel, where's my car? Finally, after about a 25 minute wait with three people in line and three people working, I was uh, attended to by the desk. Of course, uh, the car that I was hoping to receive, a Ford, a Ford Escape with 4x4 capabilities, wasn't available in the midsize SUV class, so immediately they tried upselling me to a 4x4 vehicle with a $100 extra upgrade fee. I truly needed the 4x4 capability for the off-roading and, and the mountain climbing we were going to do, so I was sold on the upgrade. And uh, upon receiving the key, I walked out to the parking lot and there was no vehicle waiting for me. Uh, there was no Ford Explorer in my space. So I had to go back to the counter and mind you, another 20 minutes had elapsed and ask where my Ford Explorer was. Uh, well, we don't know where it is and there, there should have been one out there, but if there's not, I don't know if we, if we have another one. At this point, I was pissed. I said I just spent an extra $100 reserving specifically a Ford Explorer for the 4x4 capability, and now you're going to try to give me a different large SUV in the class without 4x4? I don't think so. And I wasn't having any of this, and instead of attending to my needs, the clerical staff was getting aggressive back at me, telling me that I needed to settle down, watch my language, etc., etc., when I said I had just paid over a thousand dollars for this SUV, I want my freaking Ford Explorer. So finally, after about a half hour extra of somebody digging around the back lot, running around the back office, doing God knows what, they gave me some keys to a Ford freaking Explorer. Exasperated, I left the building and walked out to the lot, hoping that I'd actually see one out there. This time, luckily there was, but this thing was caked in mud hadn't been washed in what looked like weeks. There was more bugs on the windshield than I've ever seen. But regardless, I took the vehicle because I didn't really care if it was dirty at this point. I just wanted to get the heck out of the airport and to my hotel because it was going on three in the morning. So we load up the SUV, drive on off to the gate, present our receipt, and the security officer's like, well, I can't let you out. Uh, we have a black SUV listed and this one is red and it's got a different plate. So it looks like you're stealing this vehicle to me. Turns out that the guy at the desk never updated the receipt to the new vehicle that we received. And so then I had to go back a third stinking time to the desk, get the receipt updated to match the red vehicle that we finally had and not the black one that wasn't actually in the parking lot and who knows even existed. At this point, we were backing up traffic, and we had three cars behind us, and I'm just fumbling around at the gate with no receipt. The guy thinks we're stealing a car. So I had to back up, do that all over again, and finally got to the gate and got out of the Denver location. And uh, 20 miles later, the oil maintenance light came on. We pulled into the hotel, unloaded all of our stuff, tried locking the back hatch, would not lock with the rest of the vehicle. The lock on the back of the hatch was busted. Uh, the high beams wouldn't turn on. Our vehicle has gravel all over the interior, mud all over the windshield and the exterior, bugs all over the windshield. I mean, I'm just wondering what kind of piece of crap I just spent $1,000 renting on. Uh, I didn't really have any options at this point. I didn't really want to drive around at 4 in the morning and take it back to Avis with the customer service I was uh, receiving at the time. I didn't think they'd do anything for me. So I spent 10 days vacationing around in this vehicle that needed maintenance. 
and uh, expose their valuables to theft because the back hatch wouldn't lock. And that's just what I was faced with. And mind you, uh, the, the clerk asked if we wanted to take this car out into the mountains, and I said yes, and that's why he sold us the 4x4 capabilities. So we take this thing down to Great Sand Dunes National Park, and the forest ranger asked us if we want to go backcountry camping. I said, sure. He's like, well, if you had a 4x4 vehicle out there, uh, feel free to take the, the sand road to the backcountry back campsites. And I'm like, all right, well, we got a 4x4 vehicle. This is what we have it for, right? So we get out there driving this thing along a sand road. I throw it into the sand mode, which is supposed to be the 4x4 option. And we're going along. We're making a mile up this road until there's just like this little bowl. Just this tiny little bowl where we go down it and then there's a slight hill coming up. And I'm putting the foot down on the accelerator to maintain momentum so we can get over this little sand hill. And I can just feel the truck bogging, the pedal coming up, and the car just stops. Stops in the middle of the sand road in the middle of the freaking wilderness and we are stranded. We're flipping through the owner's manual, like put this thing in 4x4 mode, and there isn't a true 4x4 mode. So the car we were sold on didn't even have 4x4, and that's why I bought it. There was a sand mode and a rut mode, and neither of these traction options turned all four wheels on. So we're sitting there stuck in the sand with traction off, mashing the accelerator in this rental vehicle, and none of the tires would spin. Not a single sinking one. They were all locked up. And this was the most useless SUV I have ever rented in my life. I mean, we should have cruised right through this sand, no problem. Yet, all the weight in the back bogged us down and only the front two tires were spinning at that time. And we just couldn't get us, ourselves out of this little hole we dug. So luckily, a, a lar the largest truck I've ever seen in my life comes around the corner. It's an F450 six-door dually diesel truck. and. At this point, it was a godsend. He was able to uh, hook us up with the tow strap and, and tug us out of there. But without him, we would have been stuck out in the wilderness, probably getting dug out by a, a tractor and getting a, and would have received a large national park uh, fine for that. So we're really lucky he tugged us out. But the moral of the story is we had so many problems with this vehicle that upon the return, uh, when I returned the vehicle to Denver, you know, I, I told him everything that was going on and I asked to see a manager to see if we could negotiate a, a discount or a refund because my vehicle was a piece of crap. And, and the desk service there tells me that we don't have any managers or supervisors on staff. This is a Sunday and nobody's working. Just call our 1-800-CUSTOMER-SERVICE uh, number. I'm like, all right. So I had an hour to, to wait before the plane. So I call the 1-800 number. And the person I get on the phone with says that I have to wait until 48 hours after the contract is over before I can, they can actually do anything because they can't see the cost of the rental yet. So, all right, I table it for a couple of days, you know, get back to work, get back to daily life. And uh, after 48 hours, I call the Avis 1-800 customer service number. And I get somebody that I cannot understand. The English was so broken, this person was in a, a laughable excuse. Uh, for working for Avis. I mean, you couldn't understand a single word they were saying, but they said that they were going to give me a $43 and some cent refund. You know, the little bit I could understand this person, that's what I heard. And I didn't understand how she came to that conclusion or to that number. And I was asking, you know, how did you come about $43 and 39 cents? And she hung up on me. Couldn't understand me probably either. So that's what I was left with. I immediately called back and demanded for somebody that I could actually understand. I get a nice lady on the phone and she's like, oh yeah, I see the previous rep, you know, issued a refund of, or initiated a refund of $43.39. I don't know how we arrived on that number, but I'll waive the upgrade fee and then I'll uh, put a request through to a supervisor so you can negotiate a lower price. I'm like, sweet, you know, like that's what I've been waiting for. She's like, you should be receiving a call back within 48 to 72 hours. So I was flattered, I left it at that and waited for my call back. Waited three days and nothing, no call back. So I call back, now mind you, this is my third call to Avis and get another rep on the phone. Mind you, it took about a half hour each time to get a rep on the phone. And this time I talked to somebody and they're looking at my account and they're like, well, we, we don't see a refund initiated at all. 
I'm like, well, I just spoke with Jessica three days ago. She told me I was going to be getting a call back from a supervisor or a manager and that my upgrade fee should be getting waived. And they're like, oh, well, it doesn't look like she's initiated any of these refunds, but we see a refund of $43.39 coming on. And I'm like, cool, but, you know, I didn't ask for that. I'm trying to get, you know, 25% off or something here. So this guy says he initiates the upgrade fee to be waived and puts another call back in for me for a supervisor 48 to 72 hours. I took down his information because I was getting sick of being beat around the bush here and so therefore I could actually call the same person back and talk to the same agent. I waited three to four days, mind you, an extra 24 hours. So at this point, some 90 hours had elapsed and I did not receive a call back from a supervisor. Exasperated, I called the customer service rep number again. This is my, what, fourth time now. And I asked for the guy and his, the guy I had talked to last time. I presented his badge number and they told me that they did not know who I was speaking with last and they could not get the same person on the phone even though I had their rep number. So the last guy lied to me by saying that we'd be able to talk to him again and this guy told me that we couldn't reach the same agent. Oh, we need customer service. Sure. What's what's your name first? Robert from uh, from Angus. How can I assist you? Robert. So this is Josh, and we also have Gregor here. We're working on a case. Um, we were having some issues with uh, the vehicle that we rented. We were unsatisfied with that, and so what we were trying to do is actually just speak with um, a certain individual that we were talking to. He said to give him a call back at his service number. We have that here so we can just get in contact with him because we've already been on the phone for um, a couple hours working on this case together. Sure, I can give you that number here to look him up. Yeah, uh, please provide me that, uh, that number, please. 26853. His name is Brian. Okay, 26853. What else? That's all he gave us. We have a rental agreement number. Um, I, I don't know what it is because we lost that receipt, but he's got it in the case number. Okay, what's the case ID number? I don't have that. We just need to talk to Brian, 26853. He's got all the information. Oh, okay. That's going to be hard. Um, you know, because there's about over 100 of us right here. We have his number, though. We have his, his, his number. is 26853. We just need to talk to Brian. He I mean, said it's his. He said it's his rep number. That's his rep number. Ah, oh, that's his badge number. No, that's not gonna help me locate him. Okay. Uh, we spoke with Brian. His number is two six eight five three. And you'd actually be the fourth rep that I've contacted. Um, I talked to a Jennifer. Brian. Brian. It, this was on Friday of last week. We were supposed to receive a call. The case that we have created. Exasperated, I was starting to raise my voice on the phone. I threatened to file complaints with the Better Business Bureau or get a lawyer on the phone so that I could actually speak to a manager. Hey, you have to look at. Yes. And uh, how can I assist you? Okay, Brian's not going to be able to assist you. Why? Uh, yeah, he's, he's actually, I, I'll be honest with you, I don't really know who he is. 
but uh, I'm here to take care of you. What is, what is this case concerning? Hold, hold on, no. Robert. So he said that we have to contact him directly on this because we've are, you're already the fourth person that said that they would take care of this. And nobody has. And we've already, you know, done the whole thing, wait 48 hours to 72 hours. We've done all that. And so we... You have a case in the system under my name that I'm sure you can read. There's details in that case, and we were supposed to be contacted back by a supervisor twice now, two to three business days after our call. The first call I made last Monday, and I received no call back. And we talked to Brian on Friday, and he said I get a call from a supervisor within 48 to 72 hours, and here I am 85 hours later without a call back for the second time in a row talking to my fourth rep. So if I'm recording this conversation, and it will be made public if it's not handled well, and if we need to speak to somebody else or a lawyer, we'll get that involved or we'll get a complaint filed with the Better Business Bureau if you do not handle this. So again, read the case details. We were supposed to be contacted by a supervisor so we could proceed forward with the issues we had with our vehicle. I'm sure it is. Oh, okay. price line. Can you do price line all day? Well, I think it's the patient waiting for some work here. I think this is concerning a refund of $56.62. No. I'm supposed to back on July 26th. And, um, uh, Yeah, right. And we were also supposed to talk to a supervisor about an additional refund uh, because there were a lot of defects with the vehicle. This refund is just for the upgrade fee that I have not received in full. So there are two things that are still pending that nobody's handling here. Now, well, that shit is still proper. I'm not sure. This went up to upper management to review. And uh, it's still proper, so Mr. Wilkie, I mean, I understand. You know, you really want to get, you want to get to the bottom of this, I understand your frustration, but um, I, I just advise you just to be a little patient, just give us three, five, three or five more business days. No, no, we were told twice, three to five business days already, it's been two weeks, Robert, and nobody's contacted us. We need to get a manager on the phone now, otherwise this will be reported to the Better Business Bureau, and I'll file a formal complaint, because nobody is calling me back. Let me, uh, let you speak to supervisor. Get somebody on the line. Not giving me that same bullshit. Okay. <laughs> Positive experience, eight point seven percent. That's not just bad, that's like how are you in business? Horrendous. Well, Mr. Wilkie, thank you think of a patient waiting? And uh, I do apologize to the supervisor, like the very busy right now. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do for you is I'm going to go ahead and pop us a call back. No, today. we're not going to take a call back because nobody calls us back. You're going to stay on the line until a manager comes on, otherwise, we're going to file a formal okay. complaint. No Please remain on the line. All right. How thank long you. do you think we can expect to wait? After about 55 minutes of dinking around with this guy, uh, he's like, well, there's nobody working and the, the manager line is busy, so we'll have to give you a call back. I said, no, man, you keep me on the line because this is twice now that Avis has not called me back in their uh, designated time frame. I've waited at this point two weeks to talk to somebody. I am not hanging up. So he keeps me on line and after about an hour, a manager finally comes on the line. Um, I'm expecting a refund for a um, full-size SUV upgrade and I'm trying to get a refund for defects in the vehicle that I received. Um, I was promised three callbacks that never happened in 48 to 72 hours, so I'm finally glad to be able to talk to a supervisor. Okay, we do really apologize for that. All we're asking 
contact right now are temporarily placed on hold until further notice. But I am seeing here you were supposed to get the refund for the upgrade. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, this has already been approved. Give me a second and I'll double check that for you, okay? Okay. Thank God, right? Well, so they've reviewed my case notes and then they told me it was escalated to corporate. And I said, well, what does that mean? She's like, well, you should have received an email uh, with the resolution attached to it. I said, you know, I've checked my spam, I've checked my work email. There is nothing from you guys in my inbox. And again, I was supposed to, you're the supervisor, correct? Correct. So how, how can we not negotiate on the terms of what was wrong with the vehicle? Who? No, unfortunately, because that was already negotiated and you have already included received a letter from, again, uh, Ken Kelly. What, what letter is it? I never received. A letter was mailed to my physical address. I have nothing in the mail from you guys, and I never negotiated for 4339. Oh, you're saying you do not receive address from King Kelly, Avis Budget Group, Customer Service Escalation on August 1st at 1.52 p.m. No. We have gwilkey at tof.com. Is that your email? At what? tof.com. Okay. Gwilkey at tof.com. Okay. 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 Okay
Yeah. You have already talked about. Again, you have agreed to this on no. duty. We have, as well as you mentioned, the phone's recorded, the calls recorded. Yeah, can we, we replay have these? On July 24, 12.33 p.m., and another one on July 25th at 2.45 p.m., where they both offered you the same thing. And can we get access to these recorded conversations? Because I did not, if we played them back, 100%, I bet I did not agree to these phone calls. Can we have access to one of the first one or two calls with the reps? Okay, we can definitely pull that up, Mr. Wilkie. The only thing is that, that unfortunately, if, if so, it's going to be the same thing that you did on the note, and most likely it's going to stay on the call. We will not be able to escalate it, and you will not, unfortunately, be able to get more compensation than what they have already given you. Right. Okay, so I'm going to request that from corporate, and I'm going to ask them to send you the letter again. Okay. We'll send out on August 1st. Um, but as far as I will not be able to refund you anything else. Right. Because of the documentation that we have here, okay? Okay. Okay, um. okay Mr. Lovely. So we'll be requesting the call directly from corporate. And then it will be, it's a matter of time that they get in touch with you. And she's like, oh yeah, just wait for your email from corporate and then, yeah, we can review the, the tapes and, and go from there. So I didn't receive an email that night, of course. And then finally, later the next day, this email came from corporate, Avis, and it just said, uh, Avis is extremely sorry for the mechanical defects you experience in your vehicle. We hope you still choose us in the future. We strive to maintain a high quality feet customer service. Uh, thank you for renting Avis. And I just about lost it at that point because I had struggled and battled for two weeks to receive an email from corporate that basically said, you know, suck it, we're not going to do anything else. I just went around them and filed a complaint with the Better Business Bureau hoping that they would take care of it. I log on to the Better Business Bureau website to find out that Avis has an F rating in customer service, product quality, and just about every category there is uh, listed on the website. And I'm like, oh great, why didn't I check this out before I rented? But I didn't and now I'm paying for it. So I file a complaint describing my experience through the Better Business Bureau and wait for them to contact me back. A couple days later, Avis contacted me back with basically another generic email uh, that they had sent me from a corporate saying, oh, we're sorry for what happened. We feel that the discount we gave you was fair. So a $43.39 discount on an over $1,000 plus rental leaves me with about a 4% discount for the shit that I dealt with the entire time. I am confident that Avis and Budget Car Rentals would sell you a car with four flat tires for $1,000 and give you a 4% discount and call that fair. So if you receive any problems with your vehicle, I truly feel bad for you because you will not receive help. Therefore, I am recommending, I am preaching that you do not rent Avis uh, here, now, and in the future, and please share the word because it is my personal mission at this point to try to burn this company to the ground. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned some something, and I hope I was able to educate you on uh, Avis Car Rentals. Thank you.